Okay, I'd like to welcome and thank you, uh, Sebastian and Jan. And yeah, I don't. I just want to say that how I met. I mean, I find out Sebastian, um, Jan, and Padma actually was about the Bakma, which is the uh, okay. archive of uh, Gezi protest in Turkey. Gezi protest is one of the uh, milestones of history of resistance. I'm not quite sure how that uh, how you all feel, uh, but maybe we start with that and see where we go. So now that the audio works, I can actually speak. That's great. Wow. So um, I mean the the. The title of the entire, the, or the subtitle of the entire workshop was the current situation and how to work in it together. So, um, of course, that suggests, and that is not true, that we would have an answer to that question: how to work together in the current in the current situation. But then also, I think one has to take into account that, I mean, we've always been in the current situation. The current situation, I mean, in the past year or so, at least for some, it seems to be. It, it seems to we seem to be in a situation that is that is emergent or an emergency or different from different from how we thought things were normally, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But the closer you look at it, and you can have that as a broad political discussion, but also quite specifically as an archiving workshop, you will relatively quickly find out that um, of course that kind of normal state that the current the current situation is always an exception of never embedded in that this normal state actually is a very obvious concept and that's hopefully during the workshop that will somehow become graspable or apparent um that's that's not just an abstract political question but specifically can be specifically an archiving collaborative archiving question. so um what is the current situation working it together these are as of now, uh, quarter past ten, open questions. Um, they will probably remain open questions in, in two or three hours, but let's see where they take us. And 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 even though, as Jan said, the, the kind of the we since since what brings us together here and 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 the reason for the invitation is some archiving work that um, many others have done with us. We, we, even though we want to talk about the, and quite specifically about the how to work together, not tied specifically to um, the archive projects we've done, it would be a bit silly to not, at least briefly, because not all of you know uh, Bakma or Padma or Pandora, the, 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 the software, it would be a bit silly to not, at least briefly, in the first part of the, of the, of the, of the workshop, talk about the what. That, but um, generally, and I don't know how that is with you, and it would be good to hear feedback either on audio or in chat. Um, me personally, I'm always over the years. I've always been. I found it relatively unfulfilling to just get the what people do. I mean, I'm 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 such super interesting projects, but the what like the project presentation. This is, this is what we've done ten years ago. This is what we've done five years ago, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera always leaves me a bit unfulfilled in the sense that, oh, sometimes I'm curious, like, okay, th these are all great projects, but how were they done? What were the questions they started with and what were the questions they arrived at? And so the idea to do something from the Zen of Padma, which is a document that we sent around, is that this is a bit kind of our, no, our scratch pad, our notebook, where we sometimes put down things that we think we learned or things that we thought would be questions that we would still have to address in the future when it comes to doing to working together internationally and working together on complicated complex collaborative projects so that's a bit of the outline and i think it's a three-hour thing and we're going to take a short break in between but as jan said maybe it's best to at least give you a bit of an outline of what 
Pandora can be or is. Yeah. <clears throat> um, is it possible to share the screen for me? Uh, somehow, currently, someone else is sharing it. Is that... Do we only have the... No, you can, you can share. You are presenter now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, now. Right. Um, oh, one, uh, one, 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 Interesting. Oh, okay, so it's um, <clears throat> I mean, as part of our uh, work of um, being involved with um, kind of various internet projects and uh, uh, running a lab in Berlin where we had uh, kind of trying also to combine online and offline activities. Uh, at, in 2007, we were running a cinema, we had, were already running a cinema, but somehow we uh, also, so as part of that, we ended up creating, having a lot of films on our discs and we had a culture around sharing these files. Um, but we also, didn't really know anymore what we have. And so we thought um, this kind of mass assemblage of uh, having like too many things in on your disks and trying to kind of also work with, them, with other people on them is something that kind of Im emerged as a problem. And we developed a database or a, a system to work with these things be that goes beyond um, just having the files and beyond just uh, maybe sending them around, but, and at the same time, it, we are not, it wasn't enough to just have an, a catalog or an index that uh, others just have where you just um, have a reference to the file, to the movie that says, okay, I have this movie or this uh, video, but, and then maybe some text around it, but you cannot really see the video itself. So um, trying to come to use, um, computer systems to uh, have something that brings these two uh, approaches together to a, an index, a database of what you have, but also um, the video material itself and um, showing <clears throat> kind of, uh, and interacting with it in, in ways that is um, goes beyond uh, the pure metadata uh, approach. Um, one area then uh, so <clears throat> i mean this uh, we it, it initially uh, so this uh, we ended up creating a database that is we call zero xdb which is a database of um by now 17604 films um now this is this is it. um And uh, when you land on the page, you kind of get this overview. You can immediately navigate through it. You have um, the ability to organize the material in uh, to browse it by year, by director, by various metadata fields. But you can also um, organize things in lists. So I have way too many lists. Um, but there's also a way to kind of um, share this information with other people in uh, that, that is, I mean, it is an online system, so it's not only something that you do on your own, but it's also intended to kind of create a shared approach to, to working on these things. Um, we haven't really um, <clears throat> But obviously, um, okay, at this time, I mean, so far, this would be just kind of, okay, you have a film, it has a poster, but it's not really much uh, 
it's very much decoupled from the actual video. But as you kind of click on one of these items, you already get a preview in the lower um, part of the film uh, of the screen that kind of shows you a, a, a scene. But you, as you kind of hover over it, you also immediately jump into the film. So this is a very close. But uh, we also see this timeline at the bottom, which kind of is a visual indication. And these are kind of areas where we then have kind of also come up, we came up with new ways of um, looking at the video material. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure, Sebastian, should, uh, should we at some point, do you also want to uh, jump in and uh, do some of the things or how do we, should we? I think with the current setup, it's probably best you do the screen sharing part, but maybe we can look at whatever. Yeah, that's, that's right. I, I, I could uh, maybe navigate a bit and you can talk yeah. or something. At some point. Okay, yeah, we can do right. that as well. Um, and I've also, I'm, I'm, yeah. So I've also pasted a couple of URLs in the chat in case we want to look at things later. So as Jan said, like OXDB was our attempt to fix a personal problem we had, which was that we were downloading too many films so many films that at least looking at things in a kind of whatever file management system seem to be a bit unwieldy. But what you see now, I mean, is still kind of the, 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 the surface of these archives. Okay, this is what you expect or would expect from an, from an archive that you see a list of items and you see all these kind of categories and you can filter them and sort them, etc. One of the things that we're still very proud of after all these years, even though this is more than 10 years old, is that you can scroll to the bottom of the list of 17,000 films. Very young can do that. It's still something that all these many, many years later, imagine you could, I mean, I don't know who of you is on social media, Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, imagine you could scroll to the bottom of your feed. You can't because there is no bottom because this the, the, the entire speciality of, of social media. Or imagine you could do a YouTube search and scroll to the bottom of the results. Of course, this is not possible because in a way, these results are all kind of what you see on social media or on YouTube are not really search results, but these are more like kind of, you know, kind of propositions to engage you in in spending time on the side. Whereas here, I mean, what we what we try to do is to obviously, if you have so many films, to make things searchable and graspable and actually accessible in a way that's not just that's not just not just an interface that, that, that gives you suggestions, but an inter interface that gives you results. Still, what you see here is relatively commonplace because you see um, items and films and you can see them in something that resembles more of an extra sheet and you can, if you really want to do, and many people do that with, with Pandora, if you really want to do archival work, maybe maybe this type of more like data entry mode is something that you prefer as a as a way of looking things but obviously if you do archives of audiovisual things you you the nicest thing would be to look at the films themselves so mm, what we did in 2007 was come up with these i mean here you can already see okay average color of the film that's already quite nice but you it would be nice if you could also see a bit more in the film while you're browsing the archives so um what we've done in 2007 are those timelines which is basically just a fingerprint of the film over time that gives away an enormous amount of information about the film without you having even to watch the thing. I mean, we always add at this point of the presentation that like OXDB or Padma or Bakma, these systems are not invitations to stop watching films and only getting kind of get carried away by, by such results. But, um, what, what these timelines provide, I think, is just an, is an additional layer to the film, something that does not exist by default, but is more like a map. I mean, you have a list of maps. It's, these are maps of films. If you look at, like, you get an immediate sense of, okay, there's a certain type of color being used. Some of these films have a lot of reds. These are all very high saturation. These are colored films and not black and white films, etc. And with some, you see quite clearly the cutting frequency or certain camera movements, even in this low resolution. And, um, and of course you can like, just, um, if something interests you here, go directly into the film, directly to the flip, to the frame that you that you want and, um, and actually watch the film. I mean, that's another thing. Of course, all the films are in the database. This is not just a database of data around films. This is not just metadata, it's actual films and you can 
and you can watch that. Um, okay, there's a little kind of excursion we could make about copyright, but let's leave that out. In, in case someone of you is interested in copyright questions, you should tell us at some point, then we can talk about copyright a bit, but we didn't want to talk about copyright too much today. It's a, yeah, it's a concept that also exists, copyright. So, um, and, and finally, I think what you can do with this thing is you can search in films. Um, we, we, we realize we have subtitles and subtitles are basically time based annotations like you, these, these are not just kind of abstract kind of keywords or tags for film, but they, the subtitles are obviously um, tied to specific parts of a film. And um, you can already see that there's a little highlight where this were, were certain, this is now search for festival where a certain word appears. But you can then also, I mean, if you switch to viewers clips, for example, you can see, okay, you don't even have to go through the films as um, as as uh, static objects, but you can actually disassemble them and have them displayed along uh, across across film, and you get the specific moments in the film where something is mentioned. And of course, it's relatively clear that um, this is a, this is something that can be generalized. It doesn't have to be subtitles. You can also work on shared footage and collaborate collaboratively annotate that footage, pick keywords or pick uh, uh, whatever kind of type of data you want, text, even images if you want, and and use them to retrieve information from the films. And it kind of breaks up the film object quite a bit. Maybe you want to show edits also very briefly? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, going from uh, searching for a specific term uh, in the entire collection, and you see these as these clips. Obviously, what you have, if you look at uh, something like this query, you have a series of short uh, video clips. Each of them can be played here, but uh, it's not maybe uh, you at that, that point think like, okay, why not uh, play this back as a film again? Because what is a what is an edit? What is a film? It's a series of short um, clips. So um, there is a way to create um, these edits on the systems where you uh, either manually collect clips by setting in and out point and then uh, collect, bringing them together, or you can make an edit that is a query. So you instead of um, having a fixed one, you can basically, for example, search the subtitles for a term, in this case, phone rings, and this creates a new film that is um, has 312 clips and is 12 minutes long. Um, and in, now you could um, sort this by year, for example, and you get a historic overview of the archive and how phones are used. So it starts with um, this is now by year, the latest first, um, so uh, now we have kind of old films where people, and yes, yeah, um, so <clears throat> it starts off with, uh, the bit of ringing is nice, um, <clears throat> people picking up phones and, uh, being, uh, this old thing, but as we uh, go through the history of uh, cinema, we kind of go to, we see how phones appear in different locations and eventually there will also be mobile phones and uh, kind of maybe like this. So, um, in some ways, uh, <clears throat> these edits kind of, uh, can be, but this is still a very dynamic edit. I mean, this as new material gets added to the archive, as new uh, annotations are made, um, this edit keeps changing and updating. So it's uh, more like a saved a smart query into the archive, but it uh, can be rendered as a film. Um, it can also be then maybe exported or work further on uh, to refine it further, but uh, you can also um, use the clips and create something that is maybe more edited, but here's another one, which is a more complex query where you don't have just one search term, but it can also be, uh, so in Pandora, you can make these very advanced queries where you 
not only search for one thing, but you could search for a selection of any of these matches you want to. Uh, so this also kind of goes beyond the size of the um, dialog. But you could <clears throat> say, okay, there are these different terms that I want to look at. Um, and then you get a result which is also 23 minutes long and um, is kind of the relation of getting in and out of cars in films as a crossing point where you usually have some form of tension where people are trying to eagerly get into the car or get someone out of the car. Um, and it is one of these tropes in cinema, so it opens up a, a, an interesting view, but you could also, yeah, so I mean, these are different ways of, uh, that we have used it in uh, OSDB, but um, <clears throat> this can also be um, more um, Uh, more an attempt of kind of working through a collection uh, where you have maybe done more annotations um, in this is in a different is in Padma for example is a, is a kind of a view at of um, for, uh, the use of photography in documentary film where you then end up uh, uh, where kind of things are tagged with photography and then you basically have a relatively quickly get some sort of an edit that is people talking about photography, still uh, showing a photo and then going through an, an, an archive that isn't particularly focused on photography in cinema but, uh, or in, in film or in footage, but at the same time, this is something you can pull out and work with. Um, <clears throat> but it could also be, yeah, I think, uh, for example, in, 858, uh, which is uh, an archive from Cairo. Some of you might have seen this. The, I mean, there's some of these things that are now edits basically looking for, um, where they look for helicopters or something where it's kind of a, some, <clears throat> it's not exactly the, the primary, uh, but it's, it's one of these tropes that uh, kind of emerged in these archives and then they, want to also kind of people keep filming them as they are on the, pro the protesting and the military is kind of flying over the protest. So there is this kind of huge collection of kind of this relation between helicopters and the crowd. So um, yeah, so these kind of can become very different uh, access. But what, what is important about the, uh, what is also interesting about these edits is that they are not uh, fully new films that are just sitting on their own, but they can always be linked back. So as you pause the video, you can always jump back to that clip it comes from and then maybe see it in a larger context and understand kind of where this is. Uh, in the case of an archive like 858, it is you jump into this document that kind of is a, a protest in Cairo, um, but uh, and on OXDB, you go back to the film and you see kind of where this uh, other, uh, where it's kind of coming from. Um, but then <clears throat> you also, yeah, we end up in this other view, which is a- And, um, and maybe if I can- um, I just wanted quickly, so uh, um, by now I ended up in a view that I have, we hadn't really looked at, which is this editor view. This is also where you could add new annotations or refine them, remove uh, this tag. Uh, so with the subtitles, we obviously get them from uh, existing sources. We import them as subtitles, but uh, these keywords or even, um, anno other annotations are kind of created by people working with the material by setting an in point, setting an out point, and then adding a new description here. Um, and then it's kind of in there and for any, anyone else to see. And this can immediately, again, be used in these inquiries in edits and so on. Yeah, that's the, that's one of, that's one point that I wanted to add, which is that, I mean, this, this is not a, this is not a presentation tool per se. It's a quite universal tool. And this is not that like, you have to run it, you as an archivist or as someone who runs a Pandora website, um, does these presentations. Anyone who has a user account can do these things. You can annotate, you can write on the video, you can make your own edits, and they're no different from the ones that you find. So it's a, 
and and they don't have to be in the way of each of each other right many many different people can use an archive like this for many different purposes they get aggregated these keywords and annotations get aggregated um uh, uh as you can see here in the editor view but it's really something that i mean my impression was always that if you're if you're browsing a film archive, you're kind of already making a film in a way. You're already making a film in your head. You're already making associations, and you're making combinations. You're making cut. You're making montage by looking at such a big archive. Even though usually you make it in your head, and doing it in your head is fine. And I'm not not necessarily arguing you should replace everything you do in your head with doing it in an interface but like browsing a video archive it can of course be super nice if you can you can also just mark in and out and select copy and you've copied the clip and you can download everything it can be super nice if that material that you're looking at actually that you leave a trace on this and that the making a film while watching is actually something that's implemented in the in the software and that you can always go back to as an edit so that was kind of and it's not something that is limited to researchers or something it's the main function of the archive so everyone who visits the archive and has an account can can do all these things That's so much. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, this, uh, these edits uh, no, didn't work, but um, <clears throat> but generally, yeah, this, uh, I mean, also, like, yeah, so the, the video material that is in these archives is no longer just this idea of a film that is kind of this fixed element, but it really becomes a resource, uh, something that is broken into each uh, individual frame. Each frame is addressable. Each frame has a URL. Each frame is can, can be downloaded as a video, uh, as a f image, but can also be embedded. You can start the film from any moment, but you could also have a clip that you want to link to. So it is really um, trying to explode the film into its uh, elements and make them resources again that you could work with um, either on the platform itself by referencing the, uh, between the different uh, points or by putting it uh, outside out of the archive into new forms or linking to it as a resource. So um, uh, interestingly, the URL bar is not shared in the screen. Um, but as you navigate the archive to any point, uh, or if you set an in point and an out point, the URL in the browser is always one that you could send someone else and they reload the, on this position and they would see the same thing you're currently seeing, uh, like they jump to that frame in the thing. So that is also an, a kind of making <clears throat> this uh, very easy to, or kind of very, uh, easy to reference uh, things and also thinking of it more as a how you would want to reference a text or something is something you want to be able to say in this frame and then be able to directly point someone to it instead of saying like somewhere in the film um, and it's then relatively hard to find it um, maybe on that <clears throat> note as well um, <clears throat> We also then uh, have a section on the side that is more uh, kind of our texts that are um, that's not, yeah, it looks better. Um, so you, <clears throat> where you can have a text that is uh, a text, but in the text you would reference a specific scene and link to it and show that on the side. Uh, where the text becomes the primary resource and the video material is more an annotation to the text as opposed to the videos being annotated by text. Uh, we have text being annotated by video footage um, and you can play them alongside. You have um, <clears throat> these things um, and this could be 
the basis for a future film. In this case, it's kind of a script for a film with the references that then eventually becomes a film. But it could also be um, a book that um, references scenes where we. And then so if you take uh, like <clears throat> something like uh, the movement image, um, and then you see, okay, there there are references to um, uh, directors, and uh, but also maybe the I mean, there's kind of this kind of scene. Of, um so you <clears throat> could have a reference to uh there's the milk scene again um now <clears throat> this is also kind of we have you then have to find this uh, if someone just references it it's of not so easy to kind of find the scene again but uh it's also on a platform like this you can kind of enhance and exist an older text by kind of um, linking back these things and making this kind of not only a, a reference from memory, but maybe then also directly look at the scene. Sometimes you then find out that these uh, texts about cinema are not referencing films in the way that they had a database like this, but they maybe saw the film and then later remembered the film as they wrote and then reference it from memory. And then these memories can be also slightly distorted and uh, maybe there is a, a reference to something that doesn't quite work or is slightly different in the film. Um, I don't think. Well, this one kind of this idea of the, the <clears throat> it's a relatively short scene, but then in, he kind of in his memory it's also kind of he remembered some sort of zoom out which is not quite there, but um, or maybe we have a different edit of that. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, yeah. And of course, if I can add, like, this also works in the inverse direction, so you can then also, and you can do it automatically or manually, attach this kind of textual in information to a film again. So for a film, you could see, okay, these are all the scenes that are referenced in other texts. These are all the kind of the, the, the longer pieces that deal with a specific scene and then accumulate them. So the, 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 the referentiality between text and image goes goes um, goes both ways. Mm. Yeah, maybe um, then. <clears throat> oh yeah, Max. Um... One one more thing. Um, so I mean, we have yeah. One so last we, kind of, we have linked kind of uh, like text and film and kind of going between these two things. But this isn't the only thing we could uh, link kind of video material to. There's uh, an idea of um, a calendar which where you link it to historic events and could see it together. And there's an idea of map a map where you would link the material to a location on a map of a space. And then you could navigate the uh, things from that. And if you have a f uh, place uh, like Los Angeles that has many, uh, so I mean, this is just one film that is about Los Angeles and then so we have many scenes there but you could see okay there is this street and this is a scene that references this street but maybe there's it also goes into more detail you have a station with multiple scenes that are, uh, you can kind of immediately see there but yeah so you combine the map of a location with all the material that is shot there and you this creates a very different perspective on the film or on a set of films. In this case, we just look at one film, but obviously if we um, look at all films um, on a map, <clears throat> we uh, this is st 
still um, oh, many many things all, all over. But if we, uh, you could uh, look at a director by his um, like um, David Simmons, maybe is oh, what? I don't know if he's there. Um, Chris Marker, for example. I mean, so different directors, uh, you would you get also kind of a different idea of how they like which areas of the world they're kind of um, making. So from this map of a director, you could maybe see also uh, kind of already what kind uh, how they made films. But you could also, uh, I think, in the case of Hitchcock, you could also um, see that in his earlier years, he was it was more about he was basically making films in Europe and then to uh, later on it kind of extends to the US and this is where things take place um, but other directors are maybe more Alexander Klug it might be more centered in general no, no, no. Um, um, but maybe yeah, so I mean, Paris, uh, like some of these uh, places on the map, oh, this is the wrong search field. We want to search here for Paris. Um, <clears throat> I mean, some cities become really full with kind of uh, film references. So you can also see kind of on these different locations, you would see not only one film, but then kind of also different films that uh, play take place where these films meet in the location and not necessarily overlap otherwise in some it's in a way of showing an artifact. And this is really just the first pass. I mean what you see here is just mention of location names in, in, in subtitles. Of course, and people have done that in, in Bachmore and Padmore and 858. Of course you can very kind of directly map certain footage that is taken in a specific location and map it map it quite concretely and see once footage aggregates what type of things are in take place in a specific location and i think that can be super useful because the the there are certain connections that you can make on a map that you would not make from just looking at the footage itself it's a it's another way of doing montage i think it's another way of getting from one image to the other you can say hey i see something that is very green here show me all images that are green in the archive you can do that but of course you cannot like spatial spatial proximity is one of these things that can be super useful to have in certain situations specifically if a lot of the footage in padma in bakma in 858 ma deals with uh the of geography quite obviously may i may i ask a question yes Please. I mean, yes, please. I'll I just make, make up. Maybe this is a good point to collect a few questions and, and right. start talking about it. Yes. Okay. I just wondered how this metadata is extracted. I mean, is it done manually or through the uh, software? Or I mean, like this get in the car, get out of car, or all those locations? No. Um, so, I mean, different. So, yeah, Pandora so, itself. So, um, um, like has, the thing uh, is, both started talking. Um, so Pandora itself allows, uh, makes it easy to add annotations to video material. Um, so you can have time-based annotations. Maybe we have, I mean, the subtitles is one element that you can add where you, now, depending on your archive, in the case of 0xdb, we try to not do a manual work and try to come up with ways to find existing resources and pull them in. Um, so the subtitles would be, so you have a film that has an SRT subtitle. You can import that and you get time-based annotations for the subtitles. In the case of Padma, um, a lot of the material that is in there does not have existing subtitles. So someone has to sit down and transcribe the material, which is not done on that precision of subtitles usually, but more as a kind of it's transcribed in larger blocks. Other annotations like uh, linking it to a map, again, has to be added manually in the case of Padma. What we do on OXDB is that we search the subtitles for locations. So it's 